Well, here we are, April 19th, 2011. And on the 24th, we will have been working on this car for three years. It's its birthday on April 24th. Just got the car back from Ted, or as most of you know him, LS man. He finished up most of our electrical for us, and I thought I'd give you a little tour of what some of the things that he's done for us. First thing, the first things that Ted tried to do for us is to hook up as much of the, the Corvette electronics as we could. As you can see, I've got the stock Factory 5 trunk or engine cover latch in here, but then I decided that, that it would be way, way cooler if we could utilize the, the factory key fob and be able to just push the trunk button and have it release the trunk. So we'll be pulling this, the factory one out and, and hook, making a bracket to hold that, um, that solenoid right there that comes off the Corvette so that it'll work off the key fob just like a, like a real car. Um, that little area right up in there. Next to that yellow foam that I'm got, a, that's a pattern for me to to make a, an aluminum piece for. But that round duct right there is what goes into the the. Um, well, I'll just show you where they go into. That's where my fresh air intake is. I'm right through here, and we're going to duct that air right down into an air box that that goes into the uh, the fresh the cold air intake. We'll probably leave the air cleaner about where it's at, but we'll just build the box and then plumb the fresh air into the box. Um, this is a, the custom exhaust system that uh, we had built for us that gets our, gets our uh, exhaust coming out here to the corners. It also features a muffler that is a two-way muffler that you can put it in one direction and it uh, works as a, as a good muffler. And then you can turn, take it, undo these clamps right here on both ends and flip the entire muffler over and it works as a straight through muffler so you can get a little bit better performance, a lot better sound, um, but still be able, so when you take it out to the track you can go and then when, you, when you're done playing at the track you can flip them around and hopefully drive it like a street car. All the rest, everything else that's in here is pretty much your standard fare. Um, we're going to go ahead and put one of the, the rear, rear tanks for the uh, for the you know all the overheating problems that we're having, trying to get rid of the tank in the front, put one of that one of the kits that crash makes right back there in front of the aluminum fuel tank. Um, and then my other my other issue that we still have to deal with is this back window not fitting the not fitting the contour of the body at all. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do there. I seen somebody offers um, a, a window that's supposed to fit a little bit better. Or I may have to go with a with a uh, polycarbonate one. I hope not. I really like it being glass back here, especially with the heat and just just from general cleanup. My experience with polycarbonate is that it scratches pretty easily. Also on the rear diffuser, um, I I had decided that I didn't like it hanging down. Again, this is a street car. It's more for us just the way we like it, and not necessarily for our performance. But what we did was we actually molded it in. I'll go ahead and put that on right now, and you can see see how it fits. We went ahead and glassed in, glassed in a lip around here so that this diffuser can actually, it'll actually fit up flush with the body and we'll, we'll make this seam look really nice just like, just like the rest of the car. The seams that are something that's always kind of my pet peeve that I always look at when I look at a car and I like them to, to be even as possible. The fiberglass car, that's pretty tough, but that's what we're striving for. I also, you notice this lip right here, I left a good, a good solid lip across there. We built that up. Um, when the Factory 5 kit came, this, this actually came right down to a sharp edge right there and I wanted to have a little better chance of making a nice seam under here. It looked really great until I put the, uh, until I put the shocks on and that tends to push the whole thing back so I may have to do a little bit more modification here but kind of waiting to see what happens with that glass. That, it's all kind of uh, tied together so I'll have to see what I can do. This is also, we spent a lot of time trying to get the doors to look nice. Um, like I say, this is just kind of a, a preliminary assembly, but we got, we built the frames for up, for around the glass and tried to get it to fit in where it fits in nice in the car. Um, I have to leave this area right here so that when the door opens, it has a place to go. I need to trim that just a little bit more yet. But again, it's kind of cool because, because um, Ted hooked us up where when you unlock the door the first time, 
the driver's door opens and when you push the lock the second time, the passenger door opens. And if you notice the dome lights come on when the door opens up, the dash lights come on, the dome light on the bottom of the uh, mirrors come on. It looks like I got one that's burned out but it does come on whenever you open the, open the doors. He did some really nice work and see if I can get in here and if you can see it, he put the um, door switches right up in here. It has all the Corvette stuff so that the, door, so the dome lights stay on until you actually put the key into the car and, and start it up just like the, the factory Corvette one did. The stock gauges light up. All my interior lights for around my switches and stuff are, are all going to light up. We did a little bit of modification to the engine cover. As you can see, we, when I was able to put those, um, well, I think I can take this back off yet. I don't know if it's light enough in here to see, but when I made the, uh, the, the hoses for the, uh, got rid of the corrugated hoses and made the solid hoses, that allowed me to chop off the front of the engine cover and allowed me to put it back up. Let me see if I can get, get this a little better. Get a little better view from this side don't have the seat in here. Basically I was able to chop the front of this engine cover down and move it back because one problem that I was having was when I pulled the shifter back my elbow was actually hitting against the engine cover that came down like this. So I was able to move that back and then I'm going to um, enclose this area here have a, probably about maybe a cubic foot of storage space to put my uh, overnight pack in when I go uh, out of town. So it's a little bit of storage space. Haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with the stereo in it yet, but I think I'll probably be doing a, quite a bit of revision to the dash. As you guys know, this was the one that I that I took and I um, made the the factory five or the I'm sorry the Corvette dash and I'd made a cowl to go around it, and then I'm trying to adapt that into the stock dash, but I'm really not real happy with the way it transitioned. So I think I'll probably be, be building a, a, a custom dash for it that still incorporates the, the Corvette cluster but just kind of makes everything fit together a little bit better. As you can see the blue lights, those are the factory uh, Corvette LEDs that are on in the house or underneath the dash. Um, and as you see we did the, the door jams. I think you guys have all seen the pictures of that. And then I'll... Oh. I'll see if we can see if one of the windows will roll up. He said he got those fixed too. So I'll be right back. Okay. Driver's door didn't work out so good. I still got some window adjustment to do that. And I don't, didn't have the rubbers or anything in the other side. But the main thing is, is that it will go up and down and it, and it have, has a solid stop to track into. One other thing that Ted did to me, and I'm not sure if he meant to do this to aggravate me or because it's just what I asked for, but if you notice when you put the key in, listen to this. Just like a Corvette, just to bug me. I'm going to see if I can probably have him help me out with uh, disconnecting that. But when you turn the gauges on, and I hope hopefully you'll be able to see it, they do a full sweep. And then it tells me that the door is ajar. So I think when I close the doors, it'll probably straighten that out. There's the gate. Oh, now the gauges are on. There we go. Now we'll do a sweep. Corvette by Chevrolet. My door is ajar. What else could I ask for? Service the engine soon. I said I have I have disconnected the oil temperature sender when I put the rod shifter in, but now that we've put cables in it, I can put that back in, and I think that that message will probably go away. Um, all the rest of the lights work like they're supposed to. Um, I'm just more than happy with the way that gauge cluster works. And I, I know you can't see it 
because it's too bright out here, but the uh, heads up display is working also. Oh yeah, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it through the windshield, but I'm seeing it. There now, so you can see it a little better. And you notice I don't have a lot of uh, a lot of noise from my fuel pump because it's the stock the stock fuel pump that's inside the tank, and I suspect that when I get the uh, all the sound deadening in here, that that'll be even less abusive. I've got the blue gauge blue lights around my. Uh, my power window switches they kind of match the ones underneath he's got the illumination working on my air conditioning lights I think when these these are on they function fog lamps and hazards it's got the power um, uh, mirror switch I'll see if I can see if we can make that work Let's see, we got to turn it over to the right mirror. Let the camera get in focus. See if that switch works. What about that? Just like all the rest of the factory 5 GTMs, huh? But it's still cool. Modified the grill opening a little bit. Um, I just wanted it a little bit smaller and a little bit different look. Uh, I'll, I'll cap that all into the radiator hopefully to get as much air through the radiator as we can since as you notice we don't have any ducts coming out of the hood I'm hoping that the air can get through the radiator and back out the bottom of the car to keep it cool if that doesn't work we might have to do something else but I'm hoping for the best um, and then we'll probably I'm probably going to build a, a billet aluminum grill across there and then we'll put a diffuser across the bottom uh, or a splitter and then eventually I'll probably wind up modifying the headlights a little bit, but um, we're going to try and get our registration, get the license plates for it before I start doing too much with the lights. Okay. All right, our hood, we haven't got um, done electrically yet, so I still have the cable system. That pops up. Opens up with the factory rams. And then Ted did a whole bunch of work under here for me, make this look really nice. Hide, hid all the wires for me. We're going to get rid of the, get rid of the front tank, and hopefully just the back tank will be sufficient. He tied up all the wiring under here for me. Got it all clean so that when I paint all this, it'll look, look kind of, kind of nice. I hope. And then it closes. You know, I'm using the the stock Factory Five um, hood. Hood, actually, it's the trunk release that I moved up here. We're looking for a good even, good even seam around here. I guess it's telling me that my lights are on. And then, so the. And there we're back to where we started.